you want to just give a running commentary, I'm happy for you to do that. Uh, yeah, so this is a Lazutin hive, or a horizontal deep box hive, which is um, following or adapted from the design by Fedor Lazutin. Uh, these bees came in earlier this spring. So you can see it's got a hessian top cloth, got propolis where they've um, yeah where they've um, been propolising uh, that to it. Earlier on, it's got some follow boards at either end. Um, earlier on in the season I was feeding them to help them get established because they there's no foundation in here. Um, so these are the frames that we make ourselves, or I should say, I, I make myself. Um, so this is a very deep frame, and yeah. which has got wires across it to reinforce the comb. Yeah, and it's um, got some sort of um, spaces on it as well. Um, so these are, you know, designed for normal, normal, national, um, or. Uh, dadent frames, but if you're making them yourself, but you can you can make them longer. Um, and then it's got it's got um, a guide bar inserted in here, so I've just routed out um, a groove, and then insert, inserted a, a strip of um, a, little, a very narrow strip wood, just to encourage them to. Mm -hmm. So you don't even use a stripper foundation. No, okay. no, I think it's more secure. My my thinking is it's more secure just to use some wood for them to build through and they do you know they do seem to take take the cue so mm -hmm. this is um this is one just started there but they yeah just a little bit of the usual little heart shape yeah okay. uh, and then you can see i don't know if you can get that shot there with the different yes, you can so see the see. combs kind of coming down um it's i mean it's so beautiful seeing them kind of build this succession of of comb. Um, so this is, you know, they haven't really filled this yet. Um, this one is, they've begun to fill out a little bit. Um, this one, so also you can see what it looks like when they start Filling it out properly. I don't think there's any. Uh, sorry, it's, so there's the stores that they've started laying down. Um, and then this is what it looks like when you install them, when you convert the frames. Um, when you buy buy them in as a national package. Um, oh, I see. So these are these are really extended nationals. Yeah. Oh, okay. So. Um, this is, I bought the, them in um, from a black bee, bee breeder um, and this and that's how they've been extended. You can see some brood down there. So they're double height or more than double height? Yes, uh, yeah. Okay. yeah. So um, the idea is is that they're, the stores are going to be in the, in the outer frames. Um, and, and the brood nest will not really need to be okay. disturbed too much. Uh, so there's another follower board. We've got, still got some space to expand into. Um, so what advantages would you say this hive has over, well, A, a standard national and mm. B, a top bar hive? Well, I think you can see here, that is the depth of the wall. Right, so you know, it's that very is thick, very, yeah. very thick. That's and about then 75 mil, something like that, altogether. Yeah. Is that all at solid least. wood or is there an air gap? No, in there? so there is um, the cedar cladding, which you can see the depth of there. Um, and then there's um, it's got wool insulation inside. Okay. Um, and then it's um, clad. So this one actually is one of the earlier designs that is clad in um, pine. Padding. So you can just you can just about see that there. Um, so it's, it's got another layer of cladding. Okay. But later on, I did actually move to ply. Um, so, but you can do you know you can do it with you can clad the inside with pine or or ply. Um, yeah, you can kind of see there cladding. Um, but it is the idea is for it to be a very 
very warm, uh, not just warm but thermally stable hive. Yes. So that um, so that the, both the humidity and the temperature. And I'm just going to put that over for me. I'm talking. Um, both the humidity and the temperature is is much more stable, um, and that they are able to control that much better. Um, and that that has health benefits for, for impairing for reproduction um, and also in the winter um, there's going to be a lot less risk of, of condensation and dripping um, and also they're going to in theory you know they and this is what we're kind of I'm tr looking for is they, they should be able to to more f effectively evaporate um, and can sort of ripen honey because um yeah because they'll they'll be able to kind of condense it more effectively um so it's it's the, in a, in a in a phrase it's so that they can take control of their internal environment yes, i guess basically, yeah basically um yeah and i'm hoping that it will allow them to be to be mobile for a bit longer into the winter and and not necessarily i, th I think we have this idea that um um shut the mic that's right Sure. Um, we have this idea that um, actually bees cluster and they just stay all together um, all winter and that's, you know, that's exactly how it should be. But there are, there is research around that suggests that that's not the case, that they do, in a, in a, in a sort of much warmer tree interior, um, they would be a lot more mobile for a lot longer, and, and I think that's the point about the, the thermal stability is um, it takes a lot longer, f hopefully, for that temperature to drop to the point where they want to cluster and not be mobile, hmm. and then it also takes a lot longer for them to come out of that, so that they're safer for longer, um, and they don't kind of come out of it too soon and, and then hmm. become too active too quickly. So these are, you know. These are still in part ideas, but there, there is. This is based on kind of on research that they're doing on on comparing hive types and mm. to, to tree cavities and their, their kind of thermal properties. So, yeah, trying to recreate those natural environments. There is a school of thought that says that it's actually good for bees to get cold in the winter, or that really, or should mm. I say, it's good for um, the temperature to drop below that which where the, the queen will continue to be laying eggs yeah yeah well exactly i think yeah i think um this is what i need to see how these work in practice but definitely the, the kind of literature seemed to implies that 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 hives you know in order to emulate um a tree cavity that hives would be a lot more insulated than mm than they are conventionally sure yeah. um so how that affects behavior in practice in this particular bit of the country hmm. um that's that's still to see and, and that's something that i'm keen to monitor and, and kind of see in practice how that bears out in terms of the health of them and, yeah. yeah i can imagine this type of hive doing very well in i don't know somewhere like canada or uh, alaska particularly well, where this, insulation yeah. is really important well this hive is a russian you know he was using yeah. this in in russia and um and i think that you know that speaks of of the fact that actually it's well suited to overwintering bees and yeah. um he was convinced that, that they did very well as a result um, yeah so, yeah, um, I'm keen to, to see how it does in this weather. Indeed. I mean, it'll be interesting to see how it works out in terms of varroa because, of course, if you, if you have a hive that keeps the bees sufficiently warm to for the queen not to go out of lay, mm -hmm. then you're providing a home for, for mites to reproduce constantly. Um, yeah, that, I mean, that is true, but I, I do also want to get some temperature it's my plan to get some temperature monitors in here because mm. it is also the case that higher, as I understand it, that higher temperatures and high humidity inhibits varroa reproduction Absolutely, and also yeah. CO2 levels in part as well kind of play into it, it seems. So if they are more able to control the environment of the hive and it is easier for them 
year round to maintain slightly, uh, you know, a, a warmer nest than than is um, it's more energetically efficient than I think. Yeah, I, I, my hope is that that will, over the whole year, impair for a reproduction. But yeah. yeah, it's difficult to know. And as you say, having a brood, a break in the brood, um, is good for us. So. Sure. And this, of course, plays into the theory of the of the, of the Vare hive as well, which mm. um, works similarly on the principle of having a sealed effectively sealed uh, space for the bees yeah, yeah. and um, the, the, with the insulation above so that they, they can again take control of their, yeah. their temperature and yeah. this, this hive is like, a, well it, it's, it's, a, it's a worry on its, on its side with a, a good deal more space in it mm. um, but it will be very interesting to see how this works out over, over time Yeah, yeah. And well, especially and, with and the black bees and I think I said with the frames being so deep they can migrate up and down the frames mm. Um, over the course of, of the winter to, to help moderate uh, the, the temperature and, and there's no queen excluder in there so they're, they're free to do that at their will and yeah it will be very interesting to see over the years because that's really the only way that you really know is kind of over time. So these hives also have um, a version of the um, the eco floor or, or the living floor, as Emily calls it. Um, they're stood on a, a layer of four four bricks high footing. And tell us about what's inside there, Emily. So they before the hives were put on the bases, they were filled with um, with rotting wood and dead wood and leaf litter collected from around the farm. In, in the woodland areas mm -hmm. to try and bring in some of the ecosystem um, that would naturally occur at the bottom of a tree and and opinion seems to be you know divided on this to some extent as to as to how how beneficial this is for bees or not because um, trials with with introducing generalist mites from from leaf litter um, have not been that successful but the but then there's also other interesting interest um, evidence about coming out from people like Paul Stanitz at Fungi um, uh, I can't remember the name but Paul Stanitz um, saying that that bees benefit from being in close contact with fungi and so I think I'm very interested in this idea of, of trying to create a a ecosystem in the hive yeah. um, and seeing what the benefits of that are you know perhaps there are mutually beneficial um, interactions with with other life and be that fungi um, kind of the microfauna or um, humidity buffers um, yes it's so let's let's see how that goes. Um, and I, I don't, it's definitely not going to do them any harm. Sure. Well, we yeah we assume we assume not because in um, in hollow trees, of course, bees are exposed to all manner of other creatures. And every hive I open, certainly, and almost certainly yours too, there'll be things like earwigs and yeah. wood lice as, as very visible proof mm. of that. Yeah, definitely. But also things like the stratiolelaps mite, which is the one I think you were talking yes, about yeah. as being deliberately introduced. But there's all, all manner of little creatures. I've heard as many as as many as 1,700 different species in a hollow tree. Yeah. So clearly, bees have lived learned to adapt uh, and work alongside and possibly in many cases with uh, those other some of exactly. those other species exactly and so i have been trying to make notes of, of of what i see in the hives because as you say you, you definitely see uh things other than honeybees in the mm. hives and um so it's just interesting to sort of note that and and any observations that come with that and um and i am quite keen to uh, do some microscope work yes, later was, on and see. That's something I haven't got around to yet with my eco floors is, to, mm. is doing actually a, 